Okay, well, good morning, Stuart. Good morning, everyone. Um, we're recording this session today with Stuart, who's kindly um, joining us to share some of his um, insights and, and journey around uh, becoming a healer. Um, and we're doing these sessions with a variety of different healers um, from all walks of life, um, because we think it's quite important that different people hear everyone's unique experience in the hope that it resonates with them in some way. So um, this is very much from Stuart's perspective and, and sharing his story with us, which we feel very privileged to, to hear. So thank you, Stuart. I'm very so, grateful for you to ask me, to be honest with you. Good. So thank you. All right. So I'll just turn down our lovely music from Mr. Tim Meter. Um, so as we get into the session then, Stuart, um, I think we've got about half an hour, 40 minutes, so okay. um, while we're recorded. Um, we're also streaming live to, to Facebook. Um, and it'd be great just to, to share with us whatever you, you feel that's relevant or important. Um, about so I, I, I begin when my kind of earliest memory really of something extraordinary happening for want of a better phrase. Um, when I was about seven years old, I was always prone to tonsillitis and different, different things. So I guess my immune system was quite weak. And I used to sleep in mum and dad's bedroom. And um, on the wall, they used to have a picture, um, a glass picture circle. And on there were three cats, and it was an electric lamp, and it used to be plugged in and just give off this glow and these three cats were um, illuminating the room just as a soft glow, I guess for comfort for me. And I remember, I'm 57 now, I remember 50 years ago, like it was yesterday. And I was, I was lying on this little bed next to mom and dad's bed, they were out of the room. And the picture changed from these three cats to what I believe was, and I'm gonna say it as it is, and I've only told a few people this until, you know, I've kind of come out publicly and said something. The, the cats faded and this picture of who I believe was Jesus Christ came onto the picture. And, and after that, I kind of recovered. Now, I never had anything like that before or, or after, not like that. But I remember it 50 years ago like it was yesterday. So it was ingrained in me. So I guess that's the first thing. I ever remember, and then I just went about my business. The same as everybody else ran our area, most kids at my age and ran my area then down the market or bricklayers, and I'd become a bricklayer, and I'd become a market lad since the age of 14. And then events started to change for me, in as much as um, mum had a stroke when I was about 16, um, 15, 16, something like that. And she obviously she couldn't talk properly. I remember holding her downstairs in the living room and just this feeling of comfort that came through me and into her. Well, that's how it seemed at the time. And again, I wasn't on any kind of a path. It just, it felt this sense of comfort was coming over me. And anyway, she recovered. I'm not saying it was down to that, but in part, I do believe something happened to mom that was, different so she recovered fully from the stroke and then when i was 21 my brother-in-law hung himself and again the course of my life changed and so it's it sounds ironic but when i go back now that set the catalyst for something in me that's never left me in that in as much as I wish I could have gone back and was an, an older man or more mature man and I could have gone back and saved him in, in my own way. Obviously, I know that sounds ridiculous, but it was the driving force for me to, on some level, not let anybody get that desperate again. I didn't realize that at the time, but I loved him to bits and it was a great loss. And still even now, you know, I think of him very often. So that seed was sown very, very early on. At the same time, I was in a relationship um, with my ex-wife and she became pregnant and, and that relationship, it, it wasn't great really. 
it was very, very stressful. And no one's fault, it was just the way it was for us at the time. Um, and I say I was a market lad and bricklayer and so forth, and it, we ju it just wasn't right. And then at 26, I got cancer. And I believe like the, the cancer was because, not totally, but in part to do the stress I was under, because the honest truth is, <clears throat> I was having so many panic attacks at the time before I was diagnosed with, with the illness. Um, the cancer saved my life, because before that, my life was so bad, I wanted to die. I was, you know, it was in the right state. I, I lost all movement of my bowels, my legs. It was just an awful, awful time for a long, long time. And then this diagnosis changed my life in a way. It saved me um, because after that, the prognosis of living, I think it was five years, a 60% chance of living five years or something like that, something in me wanted to live. So before that, for a long time, I couldn't see a way out. And then faced with this diagnosis, I wanted to live. And then the panic attacks continued and I went to see a healer. And uh, there were two healers that came into my life really around that time. I used to go to the QE hospital on the bus and um, yeah, I used to go on the QE hospital on the bus and I didn't want to go home um, because it sounds mad because I, it, it just wasn't a good environment for me. So they used to give me a relaxation tape at, this, at the, um, the QE hospital and I'd sit there with these headphones, listen to these meditations and um, rather than go home. So I had no place really that I felt at peace with. And somebody introduced me to this healer and I used to go down from the Curie Hospital and walk and see her. And she used to lay her hands on me. And that was the beginning of something beginning to stir within me. I don't know quite what, but she filled me with this sense of peace. And it was probably the first time I can remember that I had some sort of comparison. Because, you know, if you're living in a shed and, and then someone takes you to a house, you, you, you didn't know. And so I didn't know that I was so stressed. I knew, does that make sense? So she began to bring a comparison to me. And she gave me these batch flower remedies and she talked to me and she'd say, you expect God to come down and sit next to you and talk to you? But actually I did, literally. That's how I actually believed it would happen. And she said, it doesn't happen like that. It happens through the synchronicities and the coincidences that come into your life and, and this energy will talk to you in lots of different ways. Subsequently, I know that's true, but I also know where we can connect, you know, in, in, in different ways apart from that. So after the healing, I would go home and I was still having lots of panic attacks. And um, my mom said to me, have you ever thought of yoga? And so I thought, what's, what's all that about? So I went down to this local um, little place down the road where they did yoga classes. And I looked through the window, the glass, and there was all these women in there doing these postures. I thought, oh my God, what am I getting into? But I stepped into the room. And it must have been something in me, probably with desperation, that the yoga teacher saw. And um, she called me in and I lay at the back of the class. And she did this relaxation and in the stillness or whatever it was, it was the first time I heard a voice. And the voice said, learn to forgive again and again and again. And I literally shot up and thought with someone talking to me. It was so, I don't know if it was a male voice or a female voice, but what it was was totally beautiful and ingrained and I, I didn't understand it what does that mean, mean learn to forgive again and again and again and so I went in search of an answer to whatever it was I'd heard or or some stirrings within me began to search for a meaning of life what was this about here I was 26 years old I hadn't even been out of the country really I'd lived no life what was life about? And so I went in search of a meaning. 
I was still very, very ill. And got the energy to walk up steps and so forth. I was very, very ill at the time. And I went to a meditation class, a large yoga uh, class. And it was just me and this, this one teacher there, just me and him in the room. And he started to talk to me about meditation and the connection to the divinity, to soul. And as he began to talk through this meditation, something entered the room. It was tangible. You know that saying, the peace that passes all understanding. Well, it literally filled the room. It, was, it wasn't light exactly, but there was, a, there was something, something very, very different happened that day. And even now, 30 years later, I believe that was the day the cancer cell in my body turned off. I do believe that. I think something extraordinary happened on that day. And even the chap years later, the teacher, I never knew this at the time, but he said when I went, he rang his mentor and said, I've just witnessed something that I've never experienced before. So I know it wasn't just in my mind, but anyway, from that space, I began to do a lot of meditation. And um, I used to spend around about probably six to eight hours a day sometimes because I was so ill. No one was around. My ex-wife used to be out and come back with the kids and so forth. And um, at the time, she was um, I think about six months pregnant with my son. So when he was born, I was in a wheelchair. And I only tell you that because I want to tell you the state I was in at the time. So I started to recover. And two things happened around about that time used to be an old nurse who used to come to me and i used to used to moan about life and she'd say the right thing at the right time and then my daughter who was two used to come upstairs and hold my hand and those two things shaped my therapy practice therein because i believe those two things were the cornerstone of perhaps the most powerful medicine i ever received which was the right word at the right time, the simplicity of touch. And so I base my whole practice now on those two things. So as I began to deepen this meditation, it was almost as if I would be filled with this peace continually. And that peace has never left me since that day happened, you know, in that meditation. I move away from me, I do. You know, life takes me in lots of different directions. I get caught up in stress and da da da, the same as everybody else. But in my practice, or sometimes when I'm doing the healing, it's there and it, it never ever moves from me. So from that space, I began to, from the yoga, began to learn to train to be a yoga teacher. Um, and then my life changed again. In as much as my ex-wife really didn't know who I was anymore, you know, because I, my nature hasn't changed, but my beliefs had changed. And so we didn't quite, we weren't in line. And so inevitably that, that broke away, you know, and, and that's what happened. And then just as we got divorced, my son became ill. He went down to about five stone in weight. He started to bleed internally. He was about 14, 15 years old, 14. He was younger than that, actually. He started to bleed internally. We couldn't get a diagnosis. And then I was holding in my kitchen one day. And here I was qualified in nutrition and hypnotherapy by this time, all these different things. But we couldn't find a way, and he started to deteriorate. So I'm holding in my kitchen one day, thinking, what do I do? What do I do? And this voice, the second one that I'd heard years before, began to speak. And he, he said, he said a beautiful, profound quote, so I'm holding him like this. What, what do I do? What do I do? And the voice said, love is the only true healing balm applied where necessary to oneself and others. What? And so subsequently, all through those seven years in which he was ill, these profound statements started to come. And then moving on from that, you know, he still got Crohn's disease, which is what he was diagnosed with. I'll give him healing, but he's in remission, he's okay. You know, he's 30 years old now. That's what happened. So from that space, I began to still build my practice up. 
but there was always something missing in me. My granddad was a great healer. He used to have this corn on his hand. I never met him. But mom said he had the ability, he would just lay his hands on people and say to them, the pain's going in the corn. And she was my greatest um, advocate, really. She used to really encourage me, my mom. And I think she saw something of me in him or vice versa. And so that healing kind of part of me, that search, that quest, has always been there. And the biggest question I've ever had is that I want to know I'm not alone. Probably because of the anxiety and all the rest of it. I want to know I'm not alone. And so this quest has never, ever left me. So to bring you forward, I used to go to a spiritualist church probably 15 years ago, whatever it was. And I'd sit there and listen to the mediums and give messages. And I, it just it didn't sit right with me, if I'm honest with you. And there was a lot of internal politics within the churches and so forth. And I didn't like that. The pure mediumship and spirituality, I love, but seldom did I see that. So in my own way, I just continued to build up my practice. And a coincidence led me to you know, the center that I've got now about 10 years ago. So from that space, I give mediums a wide berth. And I just went about my business in my own way. And then I met my wife now, about five years ago, who's a medium. And there's the irony, isn't it? Then I was giving everybody a wide berth. And then my wife turns up saying that she's a mean of far. But she introduced me to something. And she said, everyone's a medium. I said, what do you mean everyone's a medium? And so she began to talk to me that we're all, all vessels for something of a sort. And so my perception changed. But listen, I still give them all a wide berth. But I was married to my wife, still out. And one day we decided to go to a spiritualist church and um, in Harborn. And there was, I just sat at the back, or maybe I, I kind of quite like sitting at the back, keeping out of the way in my own way. And um, there was a, a lady came over to me, I was saying her name, who'd been part of the church forever, like 50 odd years. And her husband ran this spiritualist church as well. And after the service, she came over to me and she said, have you ever heard of Harry Edwards? Well, somewhere in the distance I've heard of Harry Edwards. I don't know no nothing about him. She said, well, we used to go and tour with him, you know, sometimes around with him. We knew him personally, you know, and um, 40 or 50 years ago. She said, he gave me two books. And I've kept these two books. He signed them both, like 20 years or so, whatever it was. And she said, I want to give you one of the books. You want to give me one of the books that you've kept for 20 odd years. Why? You don't know me. You have the same energy as him. Now, this was one of those statements, a bit like learn to forgive again and again and again. That just had a profound effect on me. I don't know why exactly, but it was the way she'd said it. So I came back from that and, of course, Googled Harry Edwards. What's he about? But then dismissed it. You know, I've got to practice. I don't want to do any more training and anything, but it was a, it was a calling. It just wouldn't go. So inevitably, I rang um, the Harry Edwards College to see you know what it was about, and they said, "Well, there's some training coming up. You can train to be a healer." Well, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do any more training, but it wouldn't go away this whatever this was, this pull. And so she said, actually, there's no spaces left anyway. You can't come. I said, well, that's answered that then. Go about my business. So from there, about a week later, they rang me back and said, well, actually, there's a space opened up. So then I thought, well, I'll go down to Surrey because it was an open day and see what it's about. But I'm looking for a sign. I need a thunderbolt. I need something extraordinary happen to make me even budge from this position. So I'm driving down from Birmingham to Surrey. I think 
in the traffic going through London. I hated every single minute of it. And then into the countryside and a um, bit lost. And I'm beginning to have a rant. I'm driving in the car and I'm having one of them moments. And maybe if everyone's honest, they probably have the same moments. I'm starting to rant. Harry, what the friggin' hell? Do you want to put a place like this in the middle of nowhere? What's that about? What? If you want me to come, you're going to have to give me a big sign. Why stick it in the middle of nowhere? Anyway, eventually I arrived at Harry Edwards College and there was lots going on, as you kind of know, on the open days and nothing was pulling me. It was just maybe I was resisting on some level, but nothing was really pulling me. And then I spoke to one of the receptionists there and she said, um, I told her, I said, I've got an opportunity to train as a healer. I'm looking for a site. Uh, she said, why don't you go down Cherry Tree Walk? That's where Harry used to walk every morning. Okay, I'll, I'll have a look. And I went down there and nobody around and just sat on this bench and closed my eyes. And then I heard you ask the stupid question. And so I opened my eyes and saw the view. Now, I don't know what that sounds like to you, but in truth, it wasn't a thunderbolt. It wasn't a miraculous sign, but it was simplistic. And you see, the truth is I respond to simple things. And so it was a direct message. And of course, I could see my rant, you know, half an hour before why he would put this place here. And so it was that simple. And so from there, I began to sign up, you know, to become a healer, which I did. And, um, and that course, it wasn't, if I'm honest, so much as the course, the people who were on the course really made it extraordinary for me. But on the first day, I began to, there's a plaque on the wall, you know, blue plaque with Harry's picture. So I'm sat there with a notepad. You know, and the teachers be giving, giving us an introduction. And I asked the question, what is spiritual healing? And then from that moment, I heard the voice again and it said, I'm not the divinity, but I'm a voice connected to the divinity. What profound statement to say. And then he began to explain to me, which I can read if you want me to what he told me about what is spiritual healing. And that's when I began to write. And so each month I would go down there, I would write this dialogue up. And when the course finished, I would come to my center and I still do. And I would have this conversation because from that moment, instead of hearing like a statement, maybe once every five, 10, 15 years, it became a dialogue like I'm talking to you. I would ask a question and I would hear an answer. And that's why the book that I wrote has become called In the Company of Harry. Now, if I'm honest with you, the, the writings were lessons for me, I think. And, and if I'm honest with you, which I am, I think me putting the book together was escapism, you know, kind of, because it was easier for me to put it out there than to apply. <laughs> Does that make sense? That's the truth. Because there are some absolutely beautiful, profound things there for me to learn. But anyway, it's out there now for anybody to learn. But the truth was, they were there for me first and foremost and to apply these principles, which are incredible insights. And even when I was writing, you know, some of it down, I didn't even know how to spell some of the words. I mean, even like the conversations, they were different from how I spoke. That makes sense. And so from there, you know, beginning to do the healing and, um, and the philosophy has probably been the single biggest life-changing event in my life and I'm, I make no bones about it you know that is the truth really even way back from when I was ill it's like the next part of my life um, 
but I've yet to apply some of these beautiful principles that he talks to me about. So having someone who's given mediumship a wide berth, I realized that there are mediums who can give messages and profound statements. And although sometimes I will pick up things and write them down about people, it's not, it's not how it is for me. How it was and is for me is I have a conversation with a voice connected to the divinity. Make of that what you want, but it is the truth of what happened. And so I believe that voice in part is Harry Edwards. That's how it's yeah. been. Thank you, Stuart, for sharing that with us. And then um, it's quite interesting as your as you're talking, certain words I was jotting down, um, you know, and very much that word simplistic. Um, and as you were talking, I just felt myself as well, just becoming much more at ease and that filled with peace. So even though we are going through the dramas of life, like we all do, um, you know, that's what life's about, isn't it? We have these ups and downs and these experiences. Yeah. There is something, when you connect um, with that healing channel, or whatever way you, you want to phrase it, it gives you this inner peace that you can tap into. And um, very much when you are working with healers and you receive healing, I mean, all, all healers I know, they have healing uh, from others, um, but it also gives you a bit of this self-generative access. And I could feel that very much as you were talking, I also felt quite emotional. I was quite teary in certain parts because, um, you know, again, we just feel very privileged with each of the sessions that we've done this week to hear um, the person's story from their perspective with their understanding, which again is just a privilege that you're, you're sharing this with us. Can I just ask, um, if you kind of look back now and, you know, from where you are at the moment in this position, what, what would you say that becoming a healer or, or healing has, has kind of given you? I think full circle in a way, because it was where I began all those years ago. It was what I wanted to do. I just didn't know how. And so I went down different routes, you know, for reflexology and massage and all those type of things. But an interesting thing is when I used to do the massages, I remember um, I used to work at Bowen University and there was a lot of rugby players that came in. And so I remember this one man, he was like a tank. I thought, oh my God, 15 minutes into that, I'm just going to have to lie down for a week. So there I was doing this massage on this man. 15, 20 minutes, he was like a rock. And so I just said, turn on your side. I don't know why. And I just began to touch his back with one or two fingers. And within 30 seconds, he was asleep. I thought, that's interesting. That's really interesting. And then subsequently, I experimented with that. And what I found is sometimes I can just touch people with a finger or thing, two fingers, and my jaw clicks. Really weird, I know. And then almost I, I feel this relaxation. And I would say, 70 80 percent of people when they start to do this begin to sleep so even though i was doing the massage i believe now like some healing comes through the medium whichever you choose it's just it's different now in as much as i guess i have more of a, a focal point and a, a focus and what you said earlier about you know, the healers and so forth i think it's to do with us connecting, because Harry said he, the spiritual journey was the reconnection to the light. And that's what the journey's about. It's about our awareness of the light and thinking ourselves, this is what he said in so many words, as thinking ourselves of, as light. And he said, why, shall I read you what he told me about spiritual healing? <laughs> when he asked him that question, let me dig it out. Just while you're setting up, Stu, um, quite a few people have asked just what's the name of the book? Because, again, the timing is quite interesting, isn't it? And you talk about synchronicity. And um, I mean, myself and Stuart, we met 
two years ago, very briefly at the sanctuary, yeah. <laughs> has a lovely conversation and we haven't seen each other since. And then out of the blue this week, uh, we got connected because we, we arranged Healing Awareness Week within a, a few short days. And I just felt I should reach out to Stuart, um, who I hadn't spoken to for many, many years. And um, lo and behold, you know, he very kindly said, yeah, I'll share a bit of my story um, and said, I've just done a book. And that's just, it literally arrived pretty much within the day or two of us. It speaking. did, yeah. I mean, what's the chances of that? <laughs> so the book is called In the Company of Harold. And um, if you go to, I'm going to say this now and get it out of the way. If you go to inthecompanyofharry.com, uh, then you can have a look at it and it's on Amazon Kindle as well but anyway the truth was these were lessons that I wrote up and um, so I'm going to tell you what he says the first thing he said to me was when you really understand that everything has a divine purpose and you place your trust in that purpose only then can you make peace with life He said, if you spent as much time connecting as you do doing, you would be directly connected to the divinity. You would become a clear channel through which the light of God transcends. So I asked him that day, on that very first day, what spiritual healing? And this is what he said. He said, with the healing of the incurable, an intelligence superior to human wisdom enters the picture who knows the way to human wisdom. You're so busy looking for an answer, and yet nature gives you an answer. Just be. My conversation continued. I've never seen a healer yet, and yet you want to become the greatest of healers. How can you become something you don't believe in? You have to believe in energy. Take the idea of energy existing first and foremost. From the concept of energy as light, you can bring forward the light and direct the light to another whose light has gone out. Try this today. Give me something today that proves I'm having a conversation with you. You don't need to prove anything to anyone. You need to experience the energy as light and that in itself is enough. Anti-anxiety drugs and antidepressants only suppress and block the gateway towards the light. The light, when given chance, can and will flow through a mind whose journey has become clouded. And once the light hits hidden points within the system, energy is released. And it passes through pathways connected by the nervous system to bring about emotional relief. The journey was about the awareness of the light. The connecting of the light is a spiritual journey. It's not your job to heal everyone. Shh, until asked. And so that's how it began. And so I wrote it down, and it was only like when I looked back at it, probably a couple of weeks later, I thought, what's that? You know, because you've questioned yourself, don't you? So that's what happened. And, and the conversations have continued for the last three years just like I'm talking to you. So one third of some of those conversations I haven't put in the book, they're more personal, I guess, but I would ask questions about life, <laughs> in money, abundance, everything about healing, and, and that's what was in the book. And so I almost feel like I have to apologize for the book because it's only 130 pages. But the truth is, you could spend, because he told me just to think of myself as light for three months, just that alone. So with the book, you can, or some of the sayings in the book, you can look at it and ponder and meditate. If you read the book like a newspaper, nothing's going to happen. And so I'm no different from anybody else here, you know, looking at this. I've still yet to imbibe some of those lessons. That's the truth. But I would say some of the things in there, they're beautiful and profound. And that is the truth.
Yeah, thank you. And um, I think yeah, there's so much to, to learn, isn't there, and to know, and there's a wealth of information in the world. And yet, when you read a lot of the books around healing and, and spirituality and all of this, it always comes back to a central core thing, which is, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. It is of all of us, all of us. Harry told me it was natural. natural. When you think of it as something that anything else, it's not. It's the ability yeah. everybody has. Yeah. And that's what he told me in the conversation. Yeah. It's a natural thing. And yeah. everybody can do it. Absolutely. You just need to connect to that awareness of a different energy of the light. Absolutely. And through that stillness, that portal, other energies are allowed to come in. Because I almost feel like that stillness now is a veil. You know, when you're still this veil, these whatever it is, the healing, call it a thousand different names, comes through. It is really interesting, isn't it? Because yeah. we've been led to believe we're small and insignificant and yeah. powerless, but we're not, yeah. not really. You know? yeah. But what a mind shift that is to think of ourselves as, because everybody knows the same mind, body, spirit, but the emphasis here you know, is on the spiritual part of it, the spirituality, which is, he said, governs everything. Mm. He said, that's what he told me. Yeah. He governs everything. Yeah. What? And talks a lot about that. Talks a lot about time, you know, man-made beliefs about time. Some of the things, I mean, I couldn't even invent them. I'm not that intelligent. And some I say some of the words I couldn't even spell. <laughs> Just what? Stay away from all that stew. And there it is. It comes full circle. It's a strange one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So something extraordinary happens to each of us that we can't quite explain. Are we are we are we supposed to understand? Oh, yeah, I, I, you just reminded me. There's a couple of things just come to mind. One is that wonderful song, "Make Me a Channel of Thy Peace," and I think that really sums up a lot of, you know, what what healing can offer the individual, and also where you said um, directing the light to another whose light might be low or. or dim. He said, dim, "What happens is dim. these points in the system become dim." You know, and the, the healing is the illumination process. Yeah. You know, and it's, it, it told me it's not your job. You know, you, your job is to present light. Yeah. And how do you present light? Connection. And I'm thinking, you know, there should be more emphasis perhaps on the training of the connection than anything else. Yeah. That's my own personal view. I, I think it's... Uh... Very good point. And so again, coming back to, you know, it's very simple, very natural. And I'm reminded of one of the sessions we had this week uh, where we were told about the word, the Latin um, for spiritual is spiritus, which is to breathe life into something. And again, when you, you know, you were talking there, you know, which is very often, you know, we, we imagine when we're attuning, bringing the energy through and then uh, sharing that with with the other it's that yeah. breathing of life isn't it it's the illumination yeah. the illumination um, i mean when i wrote when he told me about the path of the light he told me about a spectrum of colors and so forth and i have a friend who works in lighting so i said to him i'm going to share this with you because is this true and uh, and he said absolutely and i didn't know any of that stuff so i just find it right it really kind of you know, quite interesting, really. Yeah. Um, but it has been the most amazing journey for sure, mm. and uh, and I feel very privileged to be connected to Harry Edwards and the whole ethos of Harry Edwards going forward, mm. which I think you know is is going to be really, really good. And what you're doing now this week has been absolutely brilliant. Yeah. You know, to incorporate people's lives and listen to the stories. I mean, I say, I said to you the day we've been told to kind of keep our distance, and yet, look, 
Yeah. People are becoming more together now than they've ever come in their whole, ever since I can remember. Yeah. Don't you think that's really strange? It is. It is. You know, separate, but yeah, we've all come together. Yeah. Like-minded people especially, but yeah. people everywhere yeah. looking after their neighbours. You know, and I, 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 when you look back on your own experiences in life, some experiences you cannot come out the same, can you? It doesn't matter what you try and do, you cannot come out exactly the same. And I'm, I think globally, there's meditations going on all over the world and so forth. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure most people will come out slightly different. Do you know that many people who want to rush back to the life that they had? Not really. <laughs> Not really. And so Harry said about trusting the divine purpose of our life. It's not easy, but what choice do we have? You know, if you're in a chronic illness and so forth, you have no choice but to place your trust in something, in someone. But I wonder, could we do that on a daily basis as best as we can? I'm not saying it's easy, but it's a choice. And so things like this are a reminder, you know, of, of for each of us to be able to kind of, I mean, I'm not saying anything we don't know. We all know this stuff. It is. It's just nice to be reminded, isn't it? One way or another. Yeah, it's very much, um, like you said, it, it's it, when you listen to what you're sharing and also when you encounter healing, very simple. Everyone can do it if they have an interest. So yeah. A lot of people... It's not their thing. That's totally fine. But for those yeah. that are interested, anyone can develop this because it's your yeah. birthright. It's it's human. It's who um, you are. Exactly. Basically. Yeah. It's who you are. We just forgot. When you were talking about the uh, the person that's into lighting, it reminded me of my husband, who's very much into electronics, um, does robotic electronics, all sorts of things. Was in the Remi. So he's he's very much electrical minded, um, and he's he's I wouldn't say he's into the stuff that I do around the healing stuff, but he's broad minded enough to know there might be something going on there. Given that we might be these electrical beings, and he kind yeah. of sees it from that side of things. And one of the things he described to me years ago was the thing is, Teresa, you know, we don't really know how we what electricity is mm -hmm. you know all the scientists and everything we've got an idea but we don't really know and yet we all know how to use electricity for mm -hmm. different purposes and i'd like to think that to normalize healing in in all its modalities um you know we're very credible people um you know there's many many trained professionals in in the world of healing that it just becomes very normalized and accessible the same as you switch on a tap for water people yeah. can access that when yeah. needed yeah. they don't need to be ill to access it in fact no. you can be very well and benefit in in so many ways and it's a good point yeah it's yeah. a good point for sure I, ju I just think it's really interesting let me read you something another quote which is along those kind of lines if you just bear with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just while Stuart's um, bringing that up, is there anyone in the chat that has any questions? Um, I've just seen one there. At some point, can we all take a minute to send love and light to everyone else? on this link um, and I think we'll take this link as the broadest sense of the link so it might be people that join the recording later or those that are are being thought of and, and uh, um, we will do that in a second once Stuart's read this for us if that's okay for everybody. Well, I'm going to read I'm going to read because it's on the theme that you just said about electricity and so forth. Yeah. I asked him a question what spiritual consciousness? The awareness of yourself as light, as we've discussed many times before. When illness forms, it since the light has dimmed. How do you get light back on in the room? Switch it on. Yes, you can switch it on. How else? 
natural light and daylight. Yeah, but you're aware of both forms of light. Yeah. There's a third way, Stuart. Please explain. The understanding lies in what light is really made up of. It's a myriad of many colors, a rainbow of sorts, a spectrum of multi-dimensional particles. Without the spectrum of colors, light would not exist, okay? Without the awareness of mind, body, and soul, you cannot turn the light on in another, back on. The switch within lies all of these aspects being taken into consideration and awareness. For each is communicating with each other, and each has a language of their own. Insight is simply the awareness of another form of language, which is light, from which light is switched back on. Take your time, Stuart. We have much to teach you. You have much to learn. You're full of light. And you see, Stuart, out of the minds of men are beautiful creations, but little compared to the beauty of one's mind aligned with nature. So take your time each day to look around, to really appreciate the time you've been allowed. For today is a gift seldom appreciated by those whose minds are caught up in the striving for and the resistance against all that is today. Soak up and imbibe the higher energies within nature for what the eye doesn't see is far more important on a level that you will not fully appreciate in this realm. It's really just, I think it's really interesting because I don't pretend to understand a lot of it, but I just think it's interesting. And the next part of my life will be hopefully the application of more of this. Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? And I know, um, you know, when you speak to a lot of musicians, uh, people that are very creative, they talk about this inspiration and it almost comes, I think those of you that experienced it, I know I've experienced it quite a few times in my life, it will come like a bolt and you write it down and it comes thick and fast. And yeah. you stand back and look at it and think, <laughs> that's not yeah. my language. I don't even know what some of them words mean. Yeah. And, and then the understanding comes. Um, and I, I call it the, the, you know, the inspired writing. Yeah. Um, because it's all in me, spirit. He told me light language was never in a spoken form. Yeah. And, and talks a bit more about that. Yeah. My favourite quote in the book, he said, peace is the greatest ambassador for change in oneself and others. The greatest ambassador for change. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If it's okay, because um, yeah. I think this all knits together, and I love this idea of the synchronicity. And I know you know we've experienced it a lot in our lives. And those of you that are in flow, you'll you'll know what what that synchronicity is like. And sometimes you try and explain it to others and they're like, well, that could happen any old time. But it happens so repeatedly and so weirdly in a good way yeah. uh, that we know that, and I can see that this is kind of unfolded in the session today. Um, so someone's mentioned, can we take a minute? So if that's okay with everybody to, to join in, only those that would like to, of course. Um, for others that are um, wouldn't, then uh, if you just, Bear with us for a moment, but I'd like to invite people now that are joining with us, either live or when we watch the recording later, just to take a minute to imagine that wonderful light in a way that's good for all of you and the rest of the world. And each of us are a light centre and we interpret things in our own way. But really with that unconditional pure love and the highest intent of all, I'd like to invite you to channel that light and direct it to where it's needed for the highest good of all of those. And for a minute, we'll now go quiet and I'll call you back in one minute.
Okay, wonderful. Well, what a great day. We've had two healing minutes within an hour. <laughs> um, so if everyone can come back in the room and um, gently just fold to the level that you normally do. Um, that's been wonderful, Stuart. Any final things to share just as we're wrapping up the session today? I would like to read um, a card, if that's okay. And so during um, the writing of, of the book and so forth and the conversations, my um, brother-in-law passed away and, and my old best friend. And I walked from the um, bathroom to the kitchen and I heard this, these words. And so these words became a card. And I gave the card to my sister as the first one. And um, I just thought I'd like to leave you with this because it's what Harry said. After the loss of a loved one, time plays her hand as she evens out the losses with new horizons and new objectives that compensate guilt, remorse, and the agonizing pain of a life that was full of light laughter and contentment but over time new light will pour into the cracks in the heart that once loved to be open to its presence takes time and time weaves her magic in the subtlest of ways never handed heavy-handed she lays rest upon your soul you may feel it first in the form of relief and the relief is always the first interpretation felt but no that it is the first and most poignant step to recovery. The recovery is already mapped out and always follows a similar path. One day, the pain, the grief that weighs so heavy in your heart begins to weigh less. It may never leave you completely, but it will weigh less. And that means you have the energy to pick up a new cargo, one that you may eventually carry you. The passage of time will reveal insights into what matters now, what counts now, and why. And that's the new form of cargo you're beginning to carry. And when you open up this cargo, you'll discover some of life's true values. Those that discover the true value of what matters will use that to take them away from a heart full of pain towards a heart full of light and laughter and love and travel lightly, as light will be the only currency needed when all have gone and all that remain. Harry. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you um, very much for the invitation and allowing me to express, you know, some of these things. And um, most people who know me know I go about my business in my own quiet way. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be able to express something that's been gifted to me. Thank you. That's lovely, Stuart, thank you. And again, the synchronicity, as I mentioned, is quite interesting. Pretty much when we got to talk, it was only a couple of days ago, wasn't it? Uh, feels like a lifetime, interestingly. Um, uh, all, all the slots for Healing Awareness Week had, pretty, had all been filled. Um, and that all happened very, very quickly, as as can often happen when when we're working in the light, things happen quickly. And uh, I was told it happens that way because we don't meddle with it too much. Then uh, we run with it and we do it. And I, I call it I'm on one or we're in flow. Um, and so when we spoke, I thought, oh, it'd be really great that we could have a session because I think so many people would love to hear and really resonate and be inspired by by the story that you have to share and some of these very inspirational words. And um, I, I looked at the calendar and said, well, we've only got Sunday at 10.15. And I was thinking it's VE Day celebrations, it's the bank <laughs> holiday, um, you know, would that work? And actually, you know, this session today, I didn't know really what we were gonna share. I think it was very poignant that it was today. Um, and it's wonderful that this afternoon you'll be joining us um, in our light session, which is a, an inspirational session. Uh, it's to have inspiration and to support the launch of our Sunflower Healing Garden, um, and also to draw a close on, 
on what is Healing Awareness Week, which we like to think of very much as Healing Awareness Week has been fantastic. And I hope, you know, we've all felt that in some shape or, or form, all our healing awareness has been broadened and deepened because of this week. I know for, for many that I've spoken to, it has. And so therefore it's not the end of something, it's actually the start of something. And, um, you know, it's wonderful. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to our session today at two o'clock. It feels uh, like, doesn't it, the, like the illumination yeah. beginning, a process on some level. And my wife, who's going to be with me as well, I'll literally be, yeah. she's going to sing, you know, and um, a beautiful song that she wrote. So there's another one. Coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. Absolutely. Love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, to be honest, the session today at two, um, we have a, a group of people that are joining us. Um, and again, they haven't been managed in what they're sharing. There's been a little bit of a theme, but it's very much from their heart, contributing their light to something. So, uh, you know, it will be quite interesting to see to see that session. Uh, today. So we'll all oh. be in the company of Harry. Yeah, <laughs> um, and yeah, absolutely. All right, well, thank you so much, Stuart. Uh, for thank those you. people that aren't aware, I'd just like to draw your attention to the Sunflower Healing Garden. This idea uh, we started to generate on Monday at the start of Healing Awareness Week. It was a very new idea and inspiration that came in last week. Um, and it's very simple. Simply, as all these good things are, I, I believe, um, is to either grow or show a sunflower in some shape or form. And as I've shared this idea with people over the week, there's been some wonderful phrases such as let's pass the sunshine on, um, let's, let's create something, let's create a, a healing sunflower garden together. Um, it's open to everyone. It's not not just limited to Harry Edwards and, and that world. This is much, much broader than this. It's very simply anybody and everybody get involved, grow or show a sunflower in, in whatever way you're inspired. There is a Facebook group we've just created. We've got nearly 200 members in a few days and they're all busy showing their little seeds going in. I've only just planted mine yesterday. Um, some are a bit further ahead, they grow them every year. And it's really to bring the idea of the power of the sunflower and how it can be just so simple, but quite uplifting for many. Um, and my hope is that wherever you go, wherever you are locally, you're driving through somewhere or walking somewhere, come September, you see these bonny blooms everywhere. And we, we all know what they mean, which is they signify hope, healing and joy thank you all right so i wish you all a very good day uh, feel free to join us at two even if this is the first time that you've contacted us and, and been in connection you know this is very much open wide open to everybody as is the the sanctuary um in terms of this form of connection um i'm just gonna say farewell to our uh, lovely people who are joining us live on Facebook and those that will join the recording um, will be monitoring the comments and things like that so uh, we'll do our best to to uh, connect with you and I'll just say goodbye now thank you and thank you for those that are joining the recording <laughs>